Ladies and gentlemen, would you like to go to Blackpool? Yes. Uh, we're going to travel about a couple of hundred miles across the UK, about just under four hours drive as I make it. Uh, and I would like to welcome up Team Blackpool to the stage. We haven't got the Strictly music for you, but as they make their way to the stage, led by Baroness Joe Valentine, I know you'll give them a warm round of applause and I'll tell you who they are. Ladies and gents, here come Team Blackpool. Now let me just say as they, uh, as they take their places, Baroness Joe Valentine in the lemon jacket is uh, leading some very interesting work, more of your approach in a moment, but just let me tell you who's who. Standing at the lectern, primed and ready for action is none other than Neil Jack, he's the Chief Executive of the Council. You've got this up on here, so let me be brief. Baroness Joe Valentine uh, sitting to his left. Uh, Kate Shane from Merlin, the name behind the names, we'll hear more about that. Uh, also, Stuart Noble at the end here, he is the Chief Superintendent of Lancashire Police, and next to him, Nazir Rasmu uh, Remtula, who's the Joint Managing Director of Layla's Foods. I had the honour of meeting Layla herself last night. Let's give them all a round of applause and welcome. Thank you. Neil, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Set uh, us the scene. Tell us the story. What's the background? Uh, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to come to such a, a special venue as this. It would be nice maybe next year you could come to one of our special venues. Uh, the Winter Gardens in Blackpool, or even in the special Tower Ballroom as well, so you could all do your bit of a Strictly routine. Uh, I just wanted to clear up one popular misconception about Blackpool. We don't have a black pool. We do have lots of beaches, and one of them has a blue flag. So if you're looking to bring your family anywhere nice next year, then come enjoy the golden sands of Blackpool. It is, though, a place of, uh, of significant contrasts. People tend to think that seaside resorts are something of the past, that they aren't uh, alive and breathing and building into the future. 18 million people came to Blackpool last year. And that's more than came in the 50s. They don't stay as long, but more people come. So there's lots of opportunity there. There's lots of potential for businesses to make money, for people to have a good time. There's lots of families come year after year because they enjoy the place so much. But alongside that success, alongside the massive investment we've seen since 2010, over £600 million has been invested in the town, in the infrastructure, in our beautiful promenade, in brand new tramway system, in uh, a lot of work within Blackpool Tower, which uh, Kate could tell you far more about, in our winter gardens. There has been, as well, lots of issues that we need to face. Uh, similar to some of the things you've already heard about uh, Wisbeach, we do have uh, deprivation issues, we do have issues with regard to low wages and a seasonal economy. We also have some of the lowest life expectancy in the country. And when we look at those, those issues, it's important to understand the underlying reasons for it. Across the Fylde Coast, we have some of the richest people in the Northwest within Lytham and St Anne's. Then we also have some of the poorest. And those contrasts are very similar to what you would face within a London borough, seeing some of, the, of those major differences. And when we're looking at what the, the cause underneath that is, most of those issues link to a lack of strength in our communities, and a lack of strength in our families, and a lack of aspiration. So again, common themes which you've already heard from Wisbeach. And those challenges that our families face every day, that our communities face every day, it's things we need to support them with. But the, the key driver to it, when you look at um, the statistics and when you look at our issues, there's pictures within um, the slides behind me which look at some of our housing issues. And that is fundamentally the driving force behind a lot of our challenges. Some of our communities see a turnover of 40% every single year. The average is close to 20 and within our private rented sector, which is dominated by houses in multiple occupation, which are the legacy of our successful uh, hotel and B&B and guest house industry, we used to have 5,000 hotels and guest houses. We now have about 1,500 and 3,500 houses in multiple occupation. Our private rented sector is 84% housing benefit. So it doesn't actually create a market. It doesn't actually have a link between price and quality. And the quality is often extremely poor, bare minimum legal standards, and drives a lot of misery and ill health. 
it also undermines those communities about building on them and it encourages people, if they are successful in life, they move somewhere else. So they leave behind those communities, they leave behind a, a vacancy there. But in the shadow of those issues, which are often, as was mentioned uh, by your outgoing chair, there's a wonderful promenade, which is our show front, but the streets behind hide many ills that we need to address. And there are lots of opportunities being created, which if we take advantage of collectively, then we can actually change the lives completely and permanently of the people of Blackpool. I'm born in Blackpool, so I've been given five minutes to basically get across my life's work here. The people who work in Blackpool care and are passionate and they're obsessed by it, and you need to be. It's a challenging place to work, so if you don't care, go somewhere else. We won't accept people who think it's just a job. It needs to be more than that. You need to care and it needs to be something which is inside you. And that's something you will see from the people to my left. The next few years are going to bring more investment, which we're already uh, seeing come into place. There's another £300 million worth of investment we'll see in the next three years. That's a new conference centre. That's further infrastructure. The tramway will come off the promenade for the first time since 1963. We've got two enterprise zones. We've just acquired Blackpool Airport. And there's some really big opportunities there. There's a National Energy College on that enterprise zone, run by Blackpool and the Fire College, which is an outstanding provider. So it's not just about tourism. It is about many different opportunities that we can create to try and support our local residents into a better future. And you asked the question really about what are we doing about supporting our residents to have a better future? There are lots of different programs that we are being supported with. The big lottery is heavily invested in Blackpool. We have a Better Start program, which is about supporting uh, the, our newest families from conception to three. We have a Head Start program, again, a big lottery funded one, which supports our 10 to 16 year olds, because that's an area where, as the same with Wisbeach, our GCSE results are poor. The real challenges that some of our young people are facing at that time, we need to help them more with. We need to provide a lot more support to create the, a better foundation for success. Because it isn't enough for us to create opportunities, it isn't enough for us to create jobs. We also have to help the people who are living in the town and are suffering to access those opportunities and to create an aspiration for the future from the families, from our young people. And our schools play an enormously important part in that too. But whenever I come to things like this, I do ask myself, why am I here? I'm not in some kind of fundamental uh, existential reason. The, it's what are we asking from you? What are we asking from our business community? We have some wonderful, ethical, strong, successful businesses within Blackpool. When Merlin came to the town, they didn't come because they're a good company and they are a charity and they want to do good things. They came to make money. They are making money. They're making money in the right way in the long term. They're investing in their staff, they're investing in the assets, they're investing in the community that they're part of now. That is the same for Layla's and Dambro, two other representatives that we have here. It's the same with Sainsbury's and a, a new major store came uh, into the town centre just a few years ago. They are operating in a way that values their staff and those staff are our residents and those staff are the parents of our new generation. And they value them in a way that doesn't preclude them from being successful and making money. It's mm. doing it in the right way. Mm. And the housing issues I mentioned previously are really the opposite end of that spectrum, the unethical uh, investor that we see. We have a lot of absentee landlords. We have landlords who do not care about the impact on lives. They want to make as much money in a short period of time as possible. There are yields in excess of 25% a year within our private rented sector. And that is going out of the town and creating misery. Those are the kind of things that we seek to change. And I also I'd want to echo and again... Neil, just Forgive me, Neil. I'm just going to ask you to wrap up now, yeah, no. because otherwise I want to hear our voices here. The biggest challenge I actually was given wasn't so much to talk about all the issues of Blackpool. It was actually to try and manage in five minutes, which I don't think I've ever done before <laughs> in my life. Normally they give me 50 and I take 45. <laughs> just one thing, I just wanted to echo the words of your outgoing chair in that the... We need the support of more good businesses who want to invest and do things in the right way. We have a big load to push up our hill, but together with good businesses, together with the right kind of investment from yourselves and from others, we can put more shoulders to that wheel and we can get to the mountain top. 
and achieve for the people of Blackpool. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Thank you for the Strictly invitation. We'll now turn to the judges to see what they thought of your speech. No? We won't? Excellent. Baroness Jo Valentine, we've heard about, uh, we've, we've had the scene set. Tell us a bit about your approach. Uh, thank you. Uh, earlier this year, I was subject to some impressive lobbying by Julia Cleverdon, uh, Christine Hodgson, and Amanda McKenzie. Um, as a result, I'm following in their forceful footsteps in spearheading the Blackpool Blueprint for Business and the Community's Pride of Place initiative. Uh, we call it the Blackpool Pop. Uh, we launched in July with a Seeing is Believing visit. I haven't got a clicker. Is it up there? Yes, right, OK. Um, so as you can see from this group of people visiting uh, the Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And we've had impressive offers of help since then. So David Lloyd, one of the people on the trip, is actively looking at creating an adventure park uh, in, in Blackpool, and the council is real-time helping them sort that out. The ex-Lord uh, Mayor of the City of London has agreed to chair a born and bred group for Blackpool. Uh, Christine and he are both uh, uh, ex-Blackpool people. And uh, we've got British Aerospace, Atos, Beaverbrooks and others all joining our local board uh, trying to sort out the strategy locally. So my first task was to establish a local strategic board to agree what we want to tackle and how to do it. Uh, here are our local stakeholders meeting with the visitors. Blackpool was chosen in part because of the local business connector. We've heard about them before. Somewhere in the room is Andy Charles, who had built, done an excellent job of building up trust between the public, private and voluntary sector in Blackpool. So we've collectively now agreed our vision, uh, which is to make Blackpool a place where people choose to live, work and play, a vibrant economy supporting opportunity for all. We've also agreed a set of values, a way of working, and some initial priorities. Those values include being ambitious and learning from others, having a long-term impact, as well as providing some short-term results, and drawing of the, on the best of what the private, public, and voluntary sector can bring to the table. Our initial priorities are both economic and social. So on the one hand, we want to turbocharge tourism and grow local businesses. And on the other, we are campaigning to improve housing and creating a local network of businesses committed to helping Blackpool's schools and voluntary sector. Uh, before I finish, because I don't want to get told to uh, make my last point, <laughs> um, the, um, I'd like to just suggest two ways in which you all can help us. Firstly, if you meet anyone from government, please tell them they need us to help us sort Blackpool's chronic housing problems. It's very largely, in my view, uh, national government's fault that we have the, the problem we have in Blackpool, sucking in uh, misery and, and churning out talent, completely the opposite of what we want to be doing. So please can they help us sort out Blackpool's housing. And secondly, if you're planning a conference in 2019, please come to Blackpool. There'll be a new conference centre and new hotels, and you'll be very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you, Joe. OK. So onwards. Now, uh, this panel is now ready to be pithier than you've ever been before, aren't you, Kate? <laughs> absolutely. Kate absolutely. Jane, all the way from Merlin. Uh, Kate, why do you care about Blackpool? Put it bluntly for me. Um, because it is an amazing place, a fantastic place for me personally to work in and, I, and live. Um, but sadly, not everybody feels the same way in the local community and especially with the young people. Um, unfortunately, the ones that have the desire to fulfil their potential feel that they can only do that if they leave. And for the ones that don't, they stay and they live a life of little to no aspiration and they think well they nothing good is going to happen and that has a direct impact on the community and my business i'm all about the visitor economy and if the local community aren't happy then my visitors see that and that affects their their, their stay with us so 
it can be fixed, it will be fixed. Um, there are lots of great things going on now already. Neil referred to quite a few of them. Just remind us, Kate, under the Merlin umbrella, the sorts of assets that you have, particularly locally, I mean. Well, as if I need to say the Blackpool Tower Ballroom, yeah. uh, you know, strictly, uh, strictly a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, we have the ballroom, yeah. uh, a circus, obviously the tower, um, a dungeon, a uh, Sea Life Centre, Madame Tussauds. Basically, of all of the global brands that Merlin operates, we have four of the main ones yes. in Blackpool. And that's brought credibility and underlined the fact that this big player is investing in the town. Yes, and colleagues say to you, Kate, now, right, I'm energised, I'm inspired, my sleeves are rolled up. What in practice are we going to do? How can we help? Direct me. Tell me where to go. Well, they just need to join forces with us. Basically, I said there were, there's lots going on, lots of good things going on, but we need, and I hope it is this project, but we need that to be brought together to make a compelling proposition to instil in all of the community that they can do, they can achieve. It is the place, it's built because of achievers. And in that sense, you're an enthusiast, you're, you're embracing this coalition of the willing. What can Merlin do and is Merlin doing in very practical terms on the ground? I just paint a picture with a couple okay. of, of real well, examples. We, we, we employ over 350 people. We, ha we significantly invest in training those people. Merlin obviously has opportunities for people to travel around the world and we love it when we send out somebody from Blackpool that makes you know, great strides across the world. Uh, but in Blackpool, we, do, um, we, we invest in our people and we make it a great place to work. It's about fun. I make people smile for a living. I've got a great job. But uh, we, we measure our staff engagement. Repeatedly, for the last five years, Blackpool, the cluster attractions, yes. have scored the highest staff engagement world, excuse me, worldwide in Merlin. And this year, we got 100% staff engagement in one of our attractions. We Love invest it. in our people. I make people smile for a living. I love absolutely, it. People absolutely. Have been, people have been laughing at my CV for years. Um, <laughs> Stuart, is the issue here that, if I may put it so bluntly, schemes, initiatives come and go? They always have done. They always will. You look considerably younger than you are. You've been doing this for 20 years. 28 years. 28 years, forgive me. What is, if anything, different about this? I think you've hit the nail on the head in that the issues that we're dealing with are fundamentally um, so established intergenerationally that we can't expect to deal with it overnight. And, and previously, I think we've looked through different public service professions through a particular lens. So initiatives, I think, by their very setup have been constrained. This is an opportunity to say, actually, let's peel it all back, look at what the key causal issues are, regardless of the demand on the police, the health service, social care, they come fundamentally from the same issues. And as I say, we see generation after generation of the same people coming through this public service model. Um, and we can't afford to provide the care that they need. And there you mean individuals from the same families? Individuals from the same families, from the same communities. So I think what this opportunity is, is for us to fundamentally see things differently, accept that our ambition is going to be long term and make no apologies about this. Mm. Success for us will have to be intergenerational. And what was something that you heard or saw from this group that cheered you, that made you think, actually, this is a bit different? It, to be honest, in terms of the leadership that it attracts, you know, we've, Joe's been brought to Blackpool, yep. we've got Christine Hodgson, who chairs our local <laughs> board. There's a different skill set, and I think an energy that's being developed that's, that crosses now the public, the private sector leadership. And people are prepared to accept that we can't afford to keep doing this. From the public service perspective, we can no longer afford to keep providing that, that, uh, that caring approach to all those people. Yep. Our model needs to change. So we, yes, we, we, we support people, but we support, we develop people, and we step <laughs> them away from need. Okay. That's our success. So, so. Here, here, and we need to talk about what we go from and to on that. Nasir, you're co-managing director of Layla's Foods. That's right. Uh, just tell us in practical terms, why are you connected to this agenda? You run a very successful company. Uh, your business could just be your business, and yet you care about the place as well. Absolutely. I lived in Blackpool for over 30 years, and I sincerely think the businesses need to do more linking with the community, and that's what we need, really. And there are a lot of successful businesses in Blackpool now. Mm -hmm. So we should ask them. If you don't ask them, you don't get it. So this is what it's lacking, really. So we've got a challenge. And I think. And, and you employ that. over 500 people. We employ, yeah, 550, yes. Yeah. 
I know that the answer was yes, thank goodness, but can I be so crude as to ask in practical terms, what was the question? What were you asked to, um, how were you asked to get involved? Was it for your advice? Was it to engage in a particular piece of the agenda? That's right. I know Jo, well, she, she forced me, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. That's, she's very good at that, isn't she, Jo? Yes. I've been forced by this lot. Well, <laughs> that's right. I was it was just a little <laughs> whisper in his ear, Jo. We call it peel out talk in the trade. But it's, um, it's very interesting, though, because what made you say yes? Had you been asked before, or were you just no, waiting to be asked? No, I didn't say yes. I was oh. just... Oh. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I was, put into, I was put into the spot, yes. That's what I said. If you don't ask the businesses, you don't get it. And, and you're right. And that's what we need. Get the businesses on board. And one thing you've chosen to zoom in on transport. is transport. Yes, Just tell right. us why. What's the problem because we're solving? Because Blackpool is very fragmented. I mean, the transport to the Blackpool is, the whole five courses. And it's been neglected by successful governments and councils, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> also. But I think we need to lobby, get the businesses to lobby. And, and so many good things happening in Blackpool, like conference centers, big hotels building, so, and a lot of housing is getting yeah. built up, so we need a better network. Really. And Neil, when you go into conversation with businesses, large and small, what is top of your list of things you want to discuss with them in Blackpool? How, how, does, it, how does it happen? Well, we need to know what, what helps them be successful. How can we match their desire for success alongside our desire to see the best for the future of our young people? So that commitment to training, that commitment to engaging with the schools, as part of the deal, if you like. So that's the offer from the, to society, and what can then we do to allow and support that and foster that success? Okay, now we move into our final couple of minutes. So I'd love an example from each of you. If we were to reflect in five or perhaps 10 years' time on something which has changed from something to something else, I'd love a practical example. It could be a big, big picture example, too, of something that you would like to have changed and what success looks like on this journey. I'm looking for an offer here, but I might have to come to you first, Joe. You're good on your feet, I know, sir. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I pick up on your point about the individuals. Yep. Um, there are families that we know are heavily supported by the police and the wider public service. Success for me is that their children no longer need that support in the future. Yep. Got it. Here, here. Joe. Uh, for me, success is a collective can do attitude that we start addressing some of these problems and we, and we feel we just get used to doing it and used to getting better. Yes, and on Neil's point, very briefly, about this coalition of the willing, if you're not up for it, get out sort of thing, is that your attitude, you know, get on the bus, the bus is leaving, or do you also have to invest time changing minds and dissolving cynicism and all of that? Um, well, I think everybody needs to get on the bus, and I, I don't think we've yet found a person who's not going to get on the bus. It's just a matter of time. Um, and can I just, while I'm on the subject, there's lots more of Blackpool team in the audience, so hello and thank you to, to everyone who's here. Yeah, but, no, agreed. Neil, a change which you'd like to see? Uh, success is staying in Blackpool. Just exactly the thing that Kate was talking about. Success isn't moving to the big smoke. Success mm. is coming home after you went to university coming back after you train to be a doctor and investing in your own community, that's success. Yeah, absolutely. Nazir, for you, sir. Well, I would like Blackpool to be the best place to live, in, live at, really, and stop bad publicity, which we are getting at the moment, really. That's yeah, and your sense is that gener generous publicity is generated outside Blackpool yeah. or even from within? I think it's more outside, really. Yeah. Yeah, a misperception. I think Blackpool people are very proud, really. Okay, well, pride, I know, is a word dear to your heart, Kate, but for you, a change that you are looking to see and be involved in? Yeah, it's it, it, reflecting what everybody said, really. It's about the people with the skills choosing to stay there, to set their roots, to have their families there. And, you know, Blackpool's an amazing place to visit. You should all come. Um, but it, I want it to be a great place to, to live and to work because... Yes. I want people to have more civic pride and just to, you know, be on the bus for Blackpool. Yes. Everybody on the bus for Blackpool. And speaking of the team bus, I heard a rumour there's a football team up your way. 
There's a football club for sale. So, yeah. If anybody's got any money, we would really, really like it. No good. Well, that's the classified section of this. We saw the postcard in the window earlier. But there you go. Get your table sellers, Jess. Anyway, I was very heartened to hear cheers and nods from Team Wisbeach all throughout that panel. Yeah, no I... heckles at all. And... Uh, yeah, I just want to say I've been truly inspired by Team Wisbeach. I've picked up some very practical things that I'm going to take back, that I'm going to act on. But just the whole spirit, it's infectious. And I know why you've been successful. It's because of you. And I hope that we can be here one day to talk about the successes that we've had. Well, we're on the bus. We'll see you in Blackpool next year. But for now, one and all, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.